on the front row. And as soon as testimony service would start, he jumped right up and said, Lord, I thank you for my brand new car. It's on the way. and take out a little change and step up on the bus. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. The next Sunday, go come right back to church. Soon as praise service start, testimony service up. Lord, I thank you for my brand new car. sisters that ride the bus with him say, now I know he doesn't have a car. Say, because I ride the bus with him. So why he keep testing the line like that? I know he doesn't have a car. The next Sunday, y'all said, he said, y'all see me when I ride the bus. He said, but do you see me? <laughs> good morning, good afternoon. It is 12 o'clock, and here at WAIN.TV, and we got a great inspirational uh, uh, session. First, we want to thank uh, uh, the great Dr. George Joseph Dunlap for being here with us. He's going to give you some great departing words that you can live by. We want to thank uh, our listening audience. We want to thank you for tuning in yes. to watch this great man of God. Uh, the reason that I say he's a great man of God because I witnessed it uh, last Thursday down at his church in Cunyus where he walked in and you can see when certain people walk in they can feel the spirit they can see things changing and uh, they know God is in there you know it's good to have a halo around you but make sure it's a halo that God uh, placed there and he, had, and he has that halo the only problem that I got with him, and I told him earlier that he's from Ohio. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ohio, one of them places where, you know, that that they think everything in Ohio is the best. So, uh, Pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we uh, as I said, we witnessed the, uh, your work last, last Thursday down on Thanksgiving when you fed some, you said 500 or more people. Yes, sir. And I was welcome. So, you know, it, I mean, your church, your parishioners, 
and everybody was there was so great. They, would, they, they just welcomed everybody with an open um, heart, and they had the right spirit. Mm -hmm. So we can see that you're building, you're doing a great work, and you're building a great work. So I understand you only been down there but but about a year. Yes, sir. Um, this past weekend was our one year. We uh, our first service was the weekend after Thanksgiving, so we've been there one year. Okay, give, give us a little background on you, so uh, the folks that know the kind of man. I understand that you 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 know your parents was in the ministry. Yes, sir. And your uh, kids are in the ministry. Yes. And not only uh, are you a God-fearing preacher, you, but you're a businessman. Yes, sir. And that you started several businesses. Yes, that is correct. that you've been very successful in the things that you've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let us know the kind of person that you are. And, that, and the one, and, you know, so when we are listening to what you say, is we know that not only... Uh, are you talking about it? You have done it. Well, first of all, let me say thank you for inviting us today. It's an honor to be here and welcome everyone that's watching us. And um, we have. I, um, uh, My mother and father, uh, pastor for four, over 40 years, um, producing over 30 full-time ministers in the gospel that preach around the world today, come out of our home church. And... Um, the baby of nine. I have a brother that pastors on the East Coast. He ministered for us this past week. We had, I was excited for the first time in 30 years. Um, we got to have Thanksgiving dinner with some of my brothers and sisters. Everybody got married, went their own way. Uh, there's only one left in Ohio. We've all left from Austin, Texas to Florida to Georgia and Virginia. And so we had 30 some come to our home. My mother lives with us now. She's 84. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. And, um, so, first time in 30 years, some of us got to sit down at a Thanksgiving dinner. Some of the grandkids has never sat down at a Thanksgiving dinner with us family. And we moved our couches out of our front room and put in big old tables and, and had a great time. And, and, um, but I had a father that, that taught me so much. I, um, I quote him so much. And, and I have been married 26 years. We have three boys. Um, my wife's father was a pastor. So, we both were PKs. And um, we're in trouble now, but um, but is it true what they say about pastors. Well, um, <laughs> thank blood. God for the blood. <laughs> so, but um, we um, we've done different things in ministry from evangelizing from east to west coast. Um, in fact, the very first revival I ever preached was in Dublin, Georgia. I was traveling from Ohio. You know about Dublin, Georgia? I know it. Don't I got don't. Good friends down there. Well, I stayed. I went there. I'd only been preaching for six months, and um, it was kind of funny. We was all talking about it at Thanksgiving, the first time I ever stood up in the pulpit and preached, and it was um, on a Friday evening. My wife said. He preached for 45 minutes the first time, and she went, oh, Lord. It's usually first time preachers, five, six, seven minutes. It seemed like 45 minutes, but that's inside of me. I did it as a boy. When I'd say um, I'd go over at that time was the eight-track player, and I'd shove the tape in, and I had my choir and the world of Pentecost out of Austin, Texas, and they would be my choir, and then I would step to the um, uh, behind the banister in our home and and um, took up the offering and went by in each place and picked up all the play money and put it in the offering and and um, then got up and preached and I would hear my mother in the kitchen many times crying but that was inside of me from a child and um, I watched my father who was a man of giving a man that um, built a brand new church when he built the new church within 10 years it was completely paid for um, when he walked away and retired um, my brother in Virginia, myself, we didn't want it. It turned to another man completely debt-free, sitting right there. His home was beside it on the other end of the five acres, and um, and we, we didn't feel the call. We didn't follow our father just because there was a building there. Hmm. We didn't go there just because there was a million-dollar piece of property sitting there paid off. Wow. We could have done that. And the Usually new, that's what happened. That is. But because a lot of times, and I'm not saying always, but a lot of times, men look at what's already established. And, and it they, thinks it's easier. Well, they they, they, they just figure that if they're there to build it, it, it's there. Yes. Yes. And uh, they don't have to go through the pains that he went through to build exactly. it. Exactly. 
but shot. but this is what I've learned. I don't have to have his building to carry his mantle. Oh, that is fantastic. So the same God that helped him build the building at 2450 Maysville Pike is the same God that can help me take care of what I'm doing. Now, uh, you've been here one year, and mm -hmm. uh, the big place that y'all out there in, you, it was a gymnasium, I understand. Yes, it was a Gold's Gym there at one time. Okay. So, are uh, you going to make that a home? Uh, 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 are you, as a stepping stone, do you get well, what you're trying to do? Well, I'm believing it's going to be home for a little while. Okay. Um, we, are, we are getting ready to, um, um, everything works out, we're getting ready to purchase it. Okay. And um, it will be ours. We're working on that right now while we're talking. All that stuff's being taken care of, and we're excited about it. It's 22,000 square feet from a gymnasium to two racquetball courts, a huge swimming pool. Sanctuary will seat about 500. That is a big place. It is a big place. And if that is where God wants us, that's where we'll stay because we're interested in, um, as I watched the other day, and they come in and ate. And they before they come in, we had a, a clothes closet, and the people could go into the clothes closet and pick out clothes that no charge to them. It was given that. to them. We saw that. I want to do that at least once a month that the community will know that we are there. They can come. There's no charge. Come and get you some clothes. Um, also, you just talk about some of the businesses we have. My wife and I have um, started businesses. We've owned franchise. We've um, done different things. But um, one of the things I've done was a hot dog cart. And out in front of Home Depot in, in Apopka, Florida, I owned the hot dog cart, and we fed workers coming in and out of there. And I had, and really, I had two of them and had one set at the auto parts place. And, and um, I told somebody the other day, I said, I want one of those hot dog carts back because I want to be able to pull into a neighborhood that's got a sink in it. It's got everything that we need. See, I've learned a long time ago, everything's a process that you go through. Everything's a training. I know how to feed a lot of people from the hot dog cart in one day's time because I already did it at Home Depot on a Saturday. Wow. So I could pull in to a place or go right to the church parking lot, pull the grill up, do the thing, fire the thing up, and begin to uh, whatever you want to cook on it. I mean, it's got a, a, a stainless steel top on You could cook what You don't have to do hot dogs and Italian sausages. or. And we got to the place where people was coming there, never going inside of Home Depot, but coming because they knew we was there selling food. Wow. And so. That's good food. That's good. That's a good wife. It's a great cook at anything she does. Okay. And, um, but, but there's been, there's been different things. And in, in one of the business I was telling you about there on the other side of Orlando, I, um, my wife and I and three boys started a sweeping, uh, parking lot sweeping business. And we started with a broom and a bucket. Wow. And we began, and with about six, seven, eight months, we owned $100,000 worth of equipment. Just that quick? That quick. The blessings of God, the favor of God. And again, um, I know what the song was talking about a minute ago when the man would jump up on the pew and scream, I thank God for my car. You know, I, 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 the other day, somebody got mad at me because I told him. I said, you know, I said, uh, these old-time prayers ain't where it used to be. I said, they pray about what happened last week. Let's pray to God about what he's going to give you. Yeah. We need future prayers. Mm -hmm. I mean, he blessed us in the past, and that's right. all right to talk to him, but don't dwell on that. Dwell on what he's going to do for you. That's right. And uh, that's... that's well, well, see, people don't realize this. We live in time. God doesn't. We have a calendar. It's getting ready to roll over December. We've got one month left of 2012. But God is not in 2012. He says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I change not. We have put ourselves into time. But we've got to realize when he cried, it is finished on Calvary, everything that ever needed to be done was finished. I am so glad you put it so eloquent. Now, uh... Did, uh, did I understand that you had another building here when you? How long have you been in George? I've been here. Um, I know you come here to build a big hotel. Yeah, I did. I'm I'm trying to think. I can't remember if it's four years ago. I think it was four years ago. I came to town. July, August, August. Uh, so four you years ago. Four years, and you done had two buildings. Yes, we, we, we was in another location, and um, we 
we, we moved the church from there to Conyers in Loganville, from Loganville to Conyers. Sure. And, um, but when I came here, that's how I got here. I, I was asked to be the superintendent to run the job at the, the uh, Marriott in Buckhead. Right I thought you were a, a, a street sweeping person. Well. Ah, you're going to jump from sweeping a street to uh, building a massive hotel. Well, for one thing, you got to learn how to sweep up the mess before you start building. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was a builder before I ever started this. Uh, in, in pastoring, when I see, I pastored in Ohio also. I'd followed my father-in-law two different times in pastoring. I took his church, and he went and took his home church. And so I stayed at his church for eight years and moved on a Wednesday night. I felt God tell me it was time to move. And I said, God, I'm not moving unless the people want to move. And so I told them on a Wednesday night, I said, go out and see how many cars we can park in the parking lot. And the man come back in. He said, maybe one or two, Pastor. Then we got to start parking double. And I said, how many of y'all would go to a restaurant and park double? I said, none of you. Because when you're done, you're ready to leave. Wow. And so I said, um... I feel we need, it's time to sell. It's time to go to the next level. But I, my wife and I are not voting. It is up to you as a church. The church, everyone in the church voted to, to move except for one. And we said, okay, we're going to, we're going to sell the property. And um, I walked down to Love You Realty, Mr. James, and I walked in. He always called me um, Rev. He said, what's up, Rev? And I said, well, I come to tell you we're going to sell our building, but I'm not putting it on the market with you. I just want you to know if you've got any clients. And he looked at me, leaned back in his chair and kind of laughed, and he said, Rev, let me tell you something. Nobody wants your building in this city. Every church has got, a, got their building. They're already established. And I said, well, I said, God said it's time to sell. Within three days, we sold our building for more money than we was asking for it and took everything we wanted out of it to our new building. Wow. That's, that's God. You said something a minute ago about old time prayers. Thank God for my mom and dad that taught me how to pray. And we have we have a thing every Wednesday prayer around the world. It's so sad. Not all of them. I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot of preachers that walk to the pulpit on Sunday has spent more time golfing that week than they did talking to God. Wow. Well, we, we, we're going to, uh, in, in a minute, uh, uh, give you a chance to uh, tell the world through your inspirational message. Okay. But I just wanted to uh, chat with you a little bit and get a feel of, of this warmth that, 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 that I felt when I was down there at your church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be coming back. And sometime when you're having a function, I will come down there and give folks phones or whatever okay. uh, other things that we can do. And, if, you know, we do quite a few things around here, and uh, we're going to talk later. Okay. We may uh, be doing some broadcasting, some of your stuff for you. Okay. And we'll talk about doing it. And uh, I'm gonna, we're going to pause for a cause and let you get uh, to, the, uh, to the podium. Okay. I guess he wants you to take your place. Yep. Okay. It's exciting to be here with you. We do that. Will that work? It's exciting to be here with you. Let me tell you, take a second. Take a second and um, email somebody. Text someone, let them know the website where we're at. I got a word for you today. I've come to share something that God gave me um, yesterday as I was getting ready and knowing that I was coming and I wanted to hear um, what God had to say and I want to give it to you today. I speak to you wherever you're at, wherever you're at around this world, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing. We are right now in the biggest time of suicide people with depression and oppression and and um, the things that they're going through and the things that they're facing and and I want to speak to you today you don't have to go one of the biggest things that we've ever been sold is we have to keep up with the Joneses or we have to keep up with the neighbors and 
when we have to keep up with them, it puts pressure on us and it puts pressure inside of us. And today, and I'm giving you time, text somebody, email someone, call them on the phone real quick. I want you to get a hold of them. Say, you got to get over there. Pastor Joe's getting ready to speak a word to us, and I want you to get ready today. And again, I say thank you to um, everyone, the staff here. Thank you for opening your arms and allowing us to come, because I don't take it for granted to be here. I want to tell you, I thank God for where I'm at. After 25, this is coming on our 25th year of ministry. We've seen a lot of things happen. In the last 12 months, we have literally seen people from have that's had cancer healed, Documented by the doctor. Cirrhosis of the liver. We've seen deaf ears. We've seen knees healed that, that they were um, supposed to um, have surgery. They were supposed to um, go through surgery. But God healed them. God touched them. And I know today, as I'm speaking to you right now, it's almost 25 minutes after 12 on this Thursday. I know without a shadow of a doubt, God can touch you right where you're at. God can heal you right there in your home. I don't care if you're on the job and you're sitting there at your computer. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever you're looking at in today, God can touch your life and situation. Thank you, God. Let's pray today before we start. Father, we love you. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for the opportunity that I get to minister to people on the other side of this camera. I don't know them. Only you do, God. You know what their prayers are. You know what the hidden things in their life is. I don't know what it is today. I totally trust you, God. My trust is in you. But, Father, I ask you today to touch them. I ask you to minister to them today. And, Father, let us bless them with a word that will touch them and encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. I read something yesterday, and I want to read it to you. I, I copied it, and I brought it. I want to read it to you because I'm going to talk to you about it a little bit. It kind of went along with what God was talking to me about. After the earthquake had um, settled down and subsided, when the rescue, rescuers reached the ruins of a young woman's house, they saw her dead body through the cracks, but her pose was somehow strange that she knelt, knelt on her knees like a person was worshiping. Her body was leaning forward, and her two hands were supported, supporting an object. They collapsed. The collapsed house had crushed her back and her head with so many difficulties. The leader of the rescue team put his hand through a narrow gap on the wall to reach the woman's body. He was hoping that this woman could be still alive. However, the cold and the stiff body told him that she had passed away for sure. He and the rest of the team left this house and was gone to search the next collapsed building for some reasons uh, for the house for, to reach and see if anyone else was alive. The team leader was driven by compelling force to go back to the ruin of the house of the dead woman. Again, he knelt down and as he used his hand through the narrow cracks to search the little space under the dead body, he suddenly screamed with excitement, A child! There was a child as he began to scream, and the whole team worked together carefully. They removed the piles of the ruined objects around the dead woman, and there was a three-month-old little boy wrapped in a flowery blanket under his mother's dead body. Obviously, the woman had made ultimate sacrifice for the saving of her son. When her house was falling, she used her body to make a cover to protect her son, and the little boy was still sleeping peacefully when the team leader picked him up, and the medical doctor came quickly and he examined the little boy. After he opened the blanket, he saw a cell phone inside the blanket, and there was a text message on the screen that said, If you can survive, remember I love you. This cell phone was passing around from one hand to another, and everybody that read the message wept. If you can survive, remember, I love you. Such is a mother's love for a child. As I read that yesterday, and I began to think, if you can survive, remember, I love you. And I began to hear God begin to speak. And I began to hear God begin to talk to me as I was sitting behind my desk. And I began to hear him. And I thought, God, 
I hear you saying, there's some that's been covered by mama's prayers. Oh, they're gone now. They went on to their reward. There's some grandmas that prayed, and they held over top of you because there was an enemy of your soul that was wanting to reach out and grab you. But somebody prayed for you. 2012, December, almost December, the last couple of days of November, into t uh, December of 2012, at the end of 2012, I believe we are fixing to see the greatest move and the greatest shift in the atmosphere for the things of God. There's some of you that's watching me today. You're saying, I've survived it. I don't know how I've done it. I don't know how I've made it. I don't even know how I ate some days. I don't even know how I paid the mortgage payment last month. I don't even know how I even got the job that I've got. I don't know what happened, but I have survived. And I want to tell you something. The reason you have survived is because God says, remember, I love you. There is something awesome that's fixing to happen in your life if you will trust God and believe God. I believe, I believe with all of my heart, Kim, when we speak and we say things, I believe with all of my heart, we can make it happen. We can, as we were sitting here talking earlier, and uh, he was asking me different questions. You know what? I had to make the decision. Am I going to build a business or I'm going to sit here? I got up and built a business. It took a broom and a bucket, but I got it just done. The favor of God and the blessings of God. The things, but you say, well, well, pastor, you, you don't understand. I didn't come from a pastor's home like you did. We need to quit making excuses. My father said, when you have an excuse, you'll not ever get anything done. Because you keep giving an excuse why you didn't, then you give another excuse why it didn't happen. And you, you know what? We need to get rid of the excuses. And we need to say, I've got a reason to live. I've got a reason to shout. I know, Tim, this was so ironic to me yesterday when I woke up. We've all heard it. You're watching me on, 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 on the, the camera. You, you, you said it. I've said it. Remember the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. I mean, straight out of my bed yesterday morning. When I woke up, that's the thought that hit me. And I said, wow, I've said that a lot of times. Christmas is around the corner. Remember the, the reason for the season? Jesus is the reason for the season. I've said it. I no sooner got that thought through my mind. And I heard the Lord speak to me. And he said to me, Jesus said, no, you're the reason for the season. And I went, what? I've never heard anybody say that before. I've never heard that ever. And he said to me, he says, no, you're the reason for the season. He said, because if it wasn't for you, I'd have never come. If it wasn't for you needing me, I'd have never came. If it, was ne if it was never needed for me to die on a cross, I'd have never done it. But you're the reason for the season. I've come to tell you something today. It's 1230 on this Thursday afternoon. I've come to tell you, there's a shift in the atmosphere that's taking I feel God in this room right now. And I'm telling you, as I speak to that camera, that's in front of me, you you around the world, I don't care where you're at, and you're listening to me, the same God that is right here on this platform with me is the same God that's in your house, your hotel, in your, in your workplace, on your car, on your phone, or your iPad, I don't care how you're getting me today, it doesn't matter, I've just come to give you a word, there's a shift that's taking place in your atmosphere right now. This past Sunday night, um, um, after the family had, some of them had left, some of them had stayed, and, and we met for church at Faith Church where we were a pastor at in Conyers, and my brother from Virginia was preaching, and the presence of God come into place. It's amazing. It's amazing what God can do in a short time. It's amazing how he touches people's lives, and not only touches people's lives, but to change the circumstance around their home, around them. I had a sister put her house on the market on Saturday. By Monday, had an offer on it for more money than they listed it for. And she called me yesterday after she got home and flew home on Tuesday. She called me yesterday and she said, I've got the signed contract in my hand. It's a done deal. And you want to know the best part about it? He put a deposit of over a $100,000 deposit. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm speaking to you today. 
There was one person that was on a fixed income a year ago. A little over a year ago, I told him, I said, God's fixing to change your income. They looked at me and said, what do you mean? I'm on a fixed income. I can't get a change. I can't get something different. I can't have this. And I said, don't say that because God already said it's going to happen. In the matter of just a few short weeks, their income doubled. Doubled. I want to tell you something. I am a preacher that believes that there is nothing too hard for God. I believe God can do anything. The scripture said exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think according to his riches and glory. I'm going to tell you what, I serve a rich God. He doesn't need the currency of this world. God does not deal in the currency of this world. Let me tell you what he deals in. He says, I own all the cattle on the hill. All the gold under the hills. You know what? He owns the gold, the silver, the diamonds, the oil. Hey, it's not BP and Shell that owns the oil. God put it there. God owns it. And I'm telling you something. There's a shift that's fixing to happen in the atmosphere that I'm telling you is fixing to take place for the church and the believers. And I wish I had about 10 of you all just scream amen wherever you're at across America and around this world. Because there is a change that's coming to your life. There's a change that's coming to your home. There's a change that's coming to your job. Let Christmas be the best Christmas it's ever been. Oh, you say, you mean more gifts under the tree? No, forget that. It's not time to put more gifts under the tree. It's time to become the gift and begin to reach out. And it's time to become the gift to begin to touch. It's now time to become the gift that begins to reach out and touch somebody's life. Make a difference in someone's life. So when you get up on, uh, on January the 1st and you look back at the Christmas season and you say, wow, what just happened? And I'm telling you, when you turn the corner on 2013, you're not going to want to walk backwards. You're not going to want to look backwards. You're not want to go back to 2012. But you see future ahead of you. You see great things ahead of you. You see the things that God's going to do. I'm telling you, you have survived this season. So remember, God loves you. And that's what I've come to tell you today. You've been through pain. Oh, I'm talking to people that's went through bankruptcy. I'm talking to people that's lost people with cancer. Just let me say this right. Let me take a time out. I hate cancer. Cancer has robbed your family members and have robbed my family members. And I believe, I believe with all of my heart, the scripture says that his name is above every name. And the biggest problem they ever make and the biggest mistake that the enemy ever makes is when he names it cancer. Because when they named it cancer, it said Jesus' name is above cancer. Cirrhosis of the liver, ah, thank you for naming it, because Jesus' name's above cirrhosis of the liver. Whatever name they've put on top of you, remember, God is above that. And he is a healer. He is a healer that can heal and touch. And I'm not talking about months. I, I just, this year I've never been sick a day in my life. I got on the plane and I flew from, from here to Ohio. And he was talking about Ohio a little while ago. And my 84-year-old mother just moved here with us just a few months ago. But I went to Ohio to get her. Some of y'all that are watching today, you know this is a true story that I'm telling you. I was on the plane with my wife. And as that morning, we was taken off out of Atlanta Airport. And I said to my wife, I said, well, this is a switch. We usually don't get a fly together. You're flying somewhere. And I'm flying somewhere and, and going different ways and different things. and, and um. And I, I got to Columbus Airport, and we landed. They opened up the air, the uh, the plane, the door on the airplane, and when it did, the wind came down through the airplane, and I started grasping for my breath. I had no pain. I didn't have anything going on with me that morning, and I'd be going, <gasps> couldn't breathe. And I leaned over on my wife, and I said, I don't know what's happening, but I can't breathe. And there's so much pain that I can't. I can't breathe in deep, and I don't know what's going on. I went home, got off the plane, went to my mother's house, and my mother started wrapping me and bandaging me up in Pneumo Tyson, and if you know what that stuff is, and mom starts doctoring me, she's 84 years old. Well, I went through that night, and I said, Dear God, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to the hospital. Now, you know what? I've got prayer around the world every Wednesday, and you can watch us from 12 to 1230 every Wednesday. All you have to do is go to Faith Church. Conyers, C-O-N-Y-E-R-S dot org, and click on the live button. 12 o'clock every Wednesday, we're there. We're praying for your needs. And I'm going, man, I, I don't, I, I, I'm going to the hospital, and I have a prayer show that I do every Wednesday, and people's being healed. Why am I going to the hospital? I get to the hospital, 
The doctor comes in, he checks me, they look at me and everything, and they said, you've got pneumonia in your right lung. I looked at the doctor and I said, how can it be? I said, what caused it? Did, listen to the words very closely. He said, you've got cancer in your body or you have a, some kind of a tumor. And he, when he pointed his finger at me and said that, I was sitting on that emergency bed and I lifted my finger up and said, don't you ever say that again about me. His eyes got about that big around. And he left the room. The nurse said, I've never heard nobody talk like that. I said, nobody's going to talk cancer all my life. Nobody's going to tell me I've got a tumor. Because that is not that is negative and I don't receive it. I checked myself out of the hospital in Zanesville. And, and my wife drove me to Columbus, Ohio. And I walked into that hospital. I get to that hospital. I am cut from here around and up my back. What I was going for a four-day stay and bringing the U-Haul with my mother's stuff turned into a five-week stay. I was in the hospital. They went in. They scraped my lung. They said I had the worst case of pneumonia that there is. Doctor come by. And uh, before they did all of that, he come by my room and he's telling me what he had to do. And he said, you can put the tubes in and drain, but it ain't gonna, and it's not going to work. I'll have to come back. And I said, doctor, let's pray. He grabbed hands with me and prayed right in my bedroom hospital room and I, I I prayed with him and and um, I said let's do the surgery they took me in and brought me out and and um, was in there for 12 hours for surgery and recovery and all and a few days go by they take one of the tubes out of me but they left the one and they kept coming in every morning to do an x-ray on my lung and my right lung and it's collapsed and they come in and they said it's on Saturday and or I'm sorry on Friday and they said we're going to have to take you back into surgery. We're going to have to pop that lung back open. But before we do that, we want to take you down and do a CAT scan on you to make sure we're not missing anything. I'll never forget it. Three o'clock, I looked at the clock. I'm laying on the table getting ready to slide in to do the CAT scan. And I said to God, I said, God, I've not said one word to you about me being in the hospital. I've not said one word about any of the reports of the doctor and going through surgery. I don't know what they're going to find out in this CAT scan. I don't know what's going to happen, but I want to say one thing. As Job did, I've loved you, God. I've given everything. When I told you I had the business in Florida, the parking lot sweeping business, I built a brand spanking new home in that city and never moved into it. Put a for sale sign in the yard because I would go to the parking lots early morning time and I would cry like a baby because I knew what my call was. I knew where I was supposed to be behind the pulpit and standing in front of a camera pastoring people and I knew what was on the inside of me. And yeah, there was great money there. The best money I've ever made. To this day, the best money I've ever made. I could vacation anytime I wanted, build new home, drove new cars. I know what it was like to drive a new new expeditions, F-250. I had all of that. But I was not happy because I was not doing what God told me to do. And I said, God, I told you I loved you like Job. I would follow you to the end of the world because as long as you stay my God, I know everything will be okay. And I lay there on that table and I began to tell God, I love you like Job loved you. And I've come to tell you today, God, Whatever they tell me inside this CAT scan, I don't care what's in my body, you have to go through it with me. Because I'm in you and you are in me. And I say, God, I'm depending on you, whatever it is. If they come out and say, I've got this, I don't have it, you've got it. Because I'm hidden in you. They took me through the CAT scan, 3 o'clock, take me back to my room at 3.45, I'm laying in my bed up, got the door a little bit open so some air would flow through, I see the doctor coming around the corner, and he had a big old smile on his face, and when he come around the corner, he popped his head in that room, and my mother was in there, my wife was in there, and I, and a couple other people, and the doc says, I, I, I don't know what happened, he said, I can't explain this, he said, are you ready to go home, I said, I'm ready to go home, 10 days being in the hospital, I'm ready to go home, he said, I don't know what took place, I don't know what happened. I don't know what took place in your body, but what we thought was a, a, a lung that was collapsed, it's not collapsed. The only thing we can say is a liver, your liver was cast in a shadow when we did the x-rays, and it made it look like it was collapsed. No. Listen to me. When God does something, I'm talking about a second miracle. I'm talking about just in seconds time. You know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds from when I prayed, then they slipped into the CAT scan, and the CAT scan read me, and then they sent a report to the doctor. God healed my body. I'm breathing fine. Everything's good. And watch this. They pulled that last tube out of my body. I'm cut all the way up. They cut 
my ribs right up through the middle of it. Listen to me. When they took that last tube out of my body, they took every bit of the pain out of my body. I did not take one pain pill since I've left that hospital. I'm talking about when God does something, he does it right. I said it a few moments ago and I was talking over here. When God set you, when Jesus cried, it is is finished. The finished work was done. That is your salvation, I believe, with all of my heart. What good is it to be saved and die with cancer? What good is it to be saved and, and, and live with arthritis? What good is it to be saved and have all these elements and sicknesses and diseases in our body? That is not of God. I've come to tell you today, when he cried, it is finished, he took care of your salvation. He took care of your healing. He took care of everything that you need if you will trust him and lean, not on your own understanding, but trust God. I've come to tell you something. You've got to realize that if you can survive, and if you have survived, remember he loves you. Remember he's come to touch you. Remember he's come to save you. Oh, thank you, God. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this room right here, right now. I know that he can reach through. I'm going to pray for you just in a second. I know he can reach through that camera, and he can reach into your home and that presence you're beginning to feel right now. Let me slow down. Let me slow down right here. I know the organ's not behind me. There's no choir. There's no, I don't need one. I just need a word from God and begin to speak to you. Let me slow it down right here. Because everybody thinks it's in the hype and everybody thinks it's in the jump and everybody thinks it's... And I, I don't have a problem with that. But after you're done jumping and after all your hype and whenever your feet hit the ground, there's got to be a change in your life. What good is it if you come to church? What good is it if you worship God and you still leave with pain in your body and you're not healed? Let me tell you something today. I begin to speak to the pain that's in your body right now. I begin to put your hand right where the pain's at. Arthritis, I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave that body. Back pain, leave that body I don't care if you're watching me live now if you go back to an archive and see this message it doesn't matter to me when you're watching it the same God that I'm talking about live will be in the archive when they begin to watch this again listen to me the cancer is inside of your body I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth dry up cancer in the name of Jesus tumors I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now. I take authority over you. Every bit of infirmities that's inside of the bodies of the people I'm talking to, I command you to go in Jesus' name right now. The one that's sitting there and you got tears running down your face. The sin that's inside of you has got you wrapped up and tied up. And you said, I remember, Pastor, I remember feeling the presence of God like this. I remember a day and a time whenever I used to feel God's presence like this that I'm feeling. I'm sitting in my home. I'm sitting in wherever I'm at. And it used to be at a church. But you know what? It don't have to be. He's come right to where you're at right now. And he says he stands at the door and he knocks. He won't open the door and walk in. He's waiting on you to turn the knob on the inside and open the door. And say, yes, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Yes, Father, forgive me of my sins. You listening to me today? You've got sin in your life? I want you to pray with me. Just say, say, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you now, the sin that's in my life, take it. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood now fill me with your spirit let me be filled with your spirit I invite you into my life I want to walk with you I want to talk with you help me father in Jesus name I pray amen if you just prayed that prayer, get a piece of pen, uh, a paper and a pen or a pencil. I'll give you a few seconds. I'm going to give you an email address. I'm going to give you a uh, 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 different ways to get a hold of us from phones. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what God's taking place in your life. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If I could bring Dorothy on this stage today, Dorothy could walk up here and she began to tell you, Pastor Joe began to speak the authority of the God into my life. And you're watching probably, Dorothy. I began to speak the authority and God began to change things. The cancer that they was thinking on your body, gone. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Not me. I'm just the one that's getting tired of the doctors pushing us around. I'm just the one getting tired of everybody pushing us around. we got to stand up. we got to square our shoulders back and say, I've come to fight the good fight of faith. I've come to fight. I'm not laying down. I've become to be aggressive. I've come to be put in the right position with the right attitude. I've come with the attitude of saying, I'm not going home denied. I'm not going home the same way I came. I'm not going to leave this broadcast in 12 minutes the way I tuned in at 12 o'clock. But there's a change that's happening inside of me. There's something taking place inside of me. There's a move of God. There's a shift that's happening. Today, if you want to contact me, you can reach us by the phone number 404-919. I'm sorry, 913 five two zero three four zero four nine one three five two zero three that is the number you can reach us at the office there if you don't reach someone just leave a message we can get back to you our website is www.faithchurchconyers c-o-n-y-e-r-s dot org you can contact me directly pastor joe at faithchurchconyers.org I'm looking forward to hearing from you I'm believing that the reports and I'll give that again in a minute if you didn't have a pen or paper to write with I'll, I'll give, go back and get it in just a minute I'm believing with all of my heart that God is touching you that God is ministering to you the hand of God is touching your life right now thank you for the healings that's taken place thank you for the miracles that's taken place Thank you for those that gave their life to you, Father, as we prayed across the airs and went around the world. Thank you for doing it now, God. I thank you for touching them. I thank you for ministering to them right now. Thank you for doing it, God. I praise you. I worship you. Thank you for men at this station, God. The staff that's at this station has allowed us to come in and stand on this platform today and begin to minister to the hearts around the world. Thank you for it today. Thank you for it today. I worship you. I praise you. I give you glory and I give you honor. In Jesus' name. In Je I speak to the depression right now. I speak to that depression. You've been depressed because of a job. You've been, you've been depressed because you lost your job and you're working, but you don't have the income like you used to have. Listen, as we heard the song before we started, the young man, they would come in every Sunday on the front row and jump up and thank God for his new car. And they saw him walk out and get on the bus and put, on the, put in the, the money to ride the bus home. And some of the ladies said, we know he doesn't have a new car. No, he was praising God ahead of time. He was praising God ahead of time. He was, you say, what do you do, Pastor? Uh, I, some time ago I preached the message, when one door closes behind you and the other one has not opened yet, what do you do? Just praise him in the hallway. Give him a hallway praise. Ha <laughs> ha, I've survived it. I'm still in the hallway. I've still got a chance. I'm still going to make it. I'm still going to survive. Begin to praise him in the hallway. Get a hallway experience with God. Because when you walk through that next door, you're going to need the praise and the worship that you did in the hallway to get you through the next door. Man shouted. You know what? I just want to tell you something right here. I was listening as I was listening. The women said, oh, well, we know he has no new car. He, he, he rides the bus with us. I promise you one thing. The gentleman drove his new car and the women kept driving, riding on the bus. Can I tell you something today? There's some people that you got to turn loose in order to get to your next level. Oh, it's the hardest thing. I preached at Faith Church just a few months ago on you're at the corner of walk and don't walk. That sign's flashing. Don't walk. It's giving you the count down to ten. Nine. The light's going to change. Don't walk. Don't walk. And you know what? The enemy's trying to tell you that. I'm telling you today, turn the hand loose and get across the street. Because where you're headed to hurt, the person's hand that you've got a hold of will not ever be able to go. And if you keep holding their hand, you're going to keep standing on the same corner every year, year after year after year. You're at the corner of walk and don't walk. I'm fixing to drop this mic. And I'm going to walk. What about you today? What about you today? I can't walk for you. I can't make that decision for you. I can't do that for you. You have to do it yourself. 
You have to make that decision yourself. I'm coming up out of this place. I'm coming out of this place. I am a survivor. And I survived because my mama prayed. My daddy prayed. My grandparents prayed. My children prayed. Somebody prayed for me. I survived today. And I've come to tell you, if you've survived, God loves you. And you are the reason for this season. You're the reason that a Jesus came. You're the reason. You can contact us again at 404-913-5203. We are in Conyers, Georgia. Website is faithchurchconyers.org. Or email me at Pastor Joe at faithchurchconyers.org. God bless you. I love you. I will be praying for you. I will see you next time. Have a blessed week.